Hello everybody, I am Candidate Master Kanye Mazuga from Think Chess and today we'll be looking at an easy concept which is the do's and don'ts when it comes to attacking. In chess, whoever has the advantage always has the duty and the right to attack because if they do not, they run the, the risk of actually losing that advantage. Now, a person who doesn't have the advantage will not necessarily be allowed to attack. And let me show you why. Let's look at the first game in between over here, which is a game by Taylor and another amateur. So the first game goes off E4, E5, all standard, both players putting pawns in the center, allowing most pieces to get out very comfortably in the opening. Knight F3, Knight F6. Now, basically this is called the Petrov defense. White actually is threatening the pawn on e5 and the pawn, black is also threatening the pawn on e4. Very symmetrical, no, no advantage yet for both sides. Uh, bishop c4, a very interesting idea. White takes out a piece in the opening and follows the principle of development. Now, black becomes very greedy and actually starts an attack. Knight takes e4, not such a bad move taking a pawn, but remember the principle says only the person with the advantage may start an attack. Now white actually sees the mistake done by black and tries to develop an attack himself using the fact that his opponent has made a mistake. Knight to c3, attacking the knight to e4, knight to c5, moving another piece in the opening. Not a good idea again by, by black as now he is falling behind in development. Calmly, white takes his pawn finally on e5 and have, has a huge attack on f7. White, black plays, pawn to f6, attacking the knight on e5. But now, unfortunately, there is a huge deadly attack combo that comes on because of the principle stated above. White has two knights, a knight on e4 and a knight on c6, on c3 and a bishop on c4 already developed and ready and lined up for the attack, giving him a huge advantage, which understands why this combination works. Queen h5, check, highlighting the fact that there are many weaknesses in the black camp. f7, g6, and the huge diagonal from c4 to g8. Pawn to g6, now unfortunately, both two pieces are under attack, but now the principle goes on again. We can continue attacking. So bishop take bishop f7 check. Now highlights again the fact that the king is still in the center. King to e7, knight to d5 check. King to d6, knight to c4 check. King to c6, knight to b5. Unfortunately, luring the king closer and closer to the enemy pieces, allowing him to only give checkmate after king b5, pawn a4. K takes b5, and now mid is actually mating two with pawn c3, king b3, and finally queen d1. A very astonishing game. Let's look at the next example. This is a very simple short game once again. Uh, pawn to e4, pawn to e5, same ideas. Both sides gradually, and it's a good idea to always open up in the center, allowing pieces to be more and more active and mobile because moves like pawn to e4 and pawn to e5 not only open up bishop but also the queen allowing smooth and simple development knight to f3 knight to c6 bishop to c4 and now knight to f6 both sides calmly developing their pieces in the opening not making anything so special knight to g5 now Another problem now, white is better, he had the first move. So a move like knight to g5 is actually justified. So he is trying to create an attack. Black comes back with pawn to d5, trying to sack a pawn and open up the position, allowing him to also get a, a more double-edged position. Pawn takes d5 and now knight to d4, setting up a little trick. Now, now that both the bishop on f8, the bishop on c8, and two knights are all playing in the, in the what, black camp. The attack, unfortunately, that white is going to attempt is not justified because remember the principle states 
the side with the advantage should attack. He goes pawn to d6, open up, opening up the attack from bishop on c4 onto the pawn on f7. Now, bringing another piece to the game, queen takes d6. Black now has practically not only the bishop on c8, the bishop on f8, the knight on f6, the knight on d4, and the queen on d6, ready to jump into the wide position like hot fire. Knight takes f7. Moving the, the knight for the third time in the opening and only having the bishop and the knight yet developed. Now, unfortunately, a huge mistake. And or black has a sneaky little trick. Yes, you might be wondering, hey, but isn't the, the queen and the rook being forked? Well, unfortunately, after moving like queen c6, knight takes h8 is almost completely lost. King, queen takes g2, attacking the rook in the corner. Rook to f1 and queen to e4 is already, the game is already over. Bishop to e2 and then finally knight to f3 at mate. All of these attacks, you will always notice a certain theme. One side makes a small inaccuracy or a big blunder trying to attack without having the necessary advantage in order for the attack to be successful. Like, I, let me show you another example. In this position here, which is a game played in London, 1891, uh, Blake with the white pieces and Hook with the white with the black pieces. The game is carried out as e4, e5, knight f3, d6, which is not such a good move. A move like d6 blocks in the bishop on f8, and but does kind of prepare the development of the bishop on c8. So it's not the most uh, played move, but it's called the Philidor defense. Now, White tries to get on uh, by open, getting his pieces out in the opening and plays simply bishop to c4. Now we find Black already doing a mistake. f5, such an interesting move. He's already putting pressure on the e4 pawn and starting a premature attack. And what does White do? Now he starts his attack. Another guiding principle will help us understand how to attack is Whenever our pieces are more and more mobile and the position gets more and more open, we are most likely to get much more pieces into the attack because our pieces will need a huge scope of the position. So a nice idea by White, d4, opening up the position, highlighting the fact that Black has made three pawn moves in the opening whilst White has two pieces out in the opening and a move like d4 allows the bishop on c1 ready to jump into the game. Knight into f6, black trying to put more pressure on the pawn on e4, and then comes knight to c3. Now black has one piece in the opening and white has three pieces in the open, three pieces developed. e takes d4, a huge mistake once again. Bringing another piece into the attack, allowing white to bring another piece into the attack. Queen takes d4, Bishop to, bishop to d7, and now finally, white with a huge immersive advantage has to start attacking. Knight to g5, putting another piece into the black territory and highlighting there's a huge weakness on f7, which is a key idea which allows black to white to develop a, a nice combination. Knight to c6, bishop to f7, check. King to e7, and now because the position is ripe, and very, very beautiful a sacrifice by the white queen. Queen takes f6, good shot. Realizing the fact that not only does he have enough pieces to uh, deliver mate, which starts off with king takes f6, knight to d5, king e4, knight to f3, king takes e4, and finally knight to c3, checkmate. Now, I wanna end this video off with a very nice favorite game of mine, which is played by Morphe Anderson. So the game starts off as e4 and c5. Not a common move we've been seeing recently, but it has some really nice ideas. Black is actually still claiming control of the important d4 square, because remember in the opening, we should be playing pawns which are controlling the center. Now. White tries hard to go to gain control of that set the that square because knight to f3 preparing to go d4 and put a knight on that square. Knight to c6, 
pawn to d4, going on with this plan, pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, and if you actually notice now, all of these white pieces are very easy to develop and especially are looking harmoniously. Black is unfortunately falling behind in development. Pawn to e6 trying to get these pieces out as quickly as possible. Now you see white trying to exploit a huge problem in black's camp. The, the square on d6 is actually really weak because now the pawn on c5 and the pawn on e6 has moved out of the way. So the square on d6 is, can become a very easy target for white to attack. What is a target or a weakness, you might be asking? In this situation, a weakness is a pawn or a square on the 5th or 6th rank which cannot be protected by another pawn. Now, white does not waste time. Knight to b5, attacking that huge square, wanting to put the knight on d6 and discoordinate white's piece, black's pieces as the king now will be forced to move or he'll have to give up one of his strong pieces which is the bishop on f8. Really afraid of this idea, black defends it by playing pawn to d6, another pawn move in the opening, pawn to bishop to f4, trying to put more and more pressure on the pawn on d6, and finally black is forced to actually play an interesting move, which is pawn to e5. Bishop back into e3, developing the bishop closer towards the center, the center and now black does a crucial, crucial mistake, which is break another principle. He starts an attack whilst he does not have an advantage. F5, a weakening move. Unfortunately, now we'll be seeing the fact that it's actually a weakening move as he is putting a lot of pressure on the pawn on e4, but allowing the king to still stay in the center instead of actually completing development and trying to castle. That is one of actually the important opening principles which everybody should be following. Knight one to c3. Ha, trying to get more and more pieces into the game. White calmly follows the principles. And then white do, black does actually another mistake. Pawn to f4. This is the third, this is the fourth actually pawn move, which is made by black in the first five, in the first eight moves of the game. Knight to d5. Putting another piece inside the black camp and trying to eye the square on c7. And unfortunately, as you've noticed now, it is actually really hard to defend that threat. But you might be asking yourself, hey, can't black just take the bishop on e3? Which he does. Now you understand what, ha what actually Morphe was thinking about. Knight b to c7 check. Attacking the king. King to f7 and now queen f3. Now you'll notice something very interesting. White has a huge advantage because he has not only two pieces developed, he's got a really exposed king, allowing the principal to actually work. Attack the king, attack when only you have an advantage. Knight to f6. Now fight calmly, even being pieced down, white develops another piece and puts it into the attack. Bishop to c4, a wow of a move. Knight to d4. Black tries hard to attack, but understand now, instead of saving this position and trying to get his king into safety, he is trying to attack and once again, breaking the principle in the breaking the principle which governs who can and cannot attack. Knight takes f6, check, played by white. Pawn to d5 and bishop takes d5, again, coming closer and closer to the black king. King to g6, really forced. And now, interestingly, queen h5, king takes f6, and f takes e3. A brilliant move. This little move not only attacks the knight to d4, but is, has a sneaky idea of actually bringing the rook in the corner into the attack. And now you'll understand another pre key principle. If you, have, if you want to start an attack, you need to bring more and more pieces into the side of the position whereby your opponent actually has less and less pieces which allows him to not be not not be able to defend so easily and after f takes e3 knight takes c2 and king e2 and the threat of rook h to f1 or rook a to f1 is so devastating and leading to mate that black resigned i hope you have learned a lot from this lesson and 
you are very more more and more confident on when to and not to attack. This is candidate Master Kanye Mazibu signing out.